<clears throat> Hello to my Facebook audience. PDT here, and I think I'm on Periscope, but I'm waiting for my phone to flip so I can be sure you see me. Because you know that's our uh, weekly thing. <laughs> there we go. Hello, Periscope. How you doing? Prophet David Taylor here, coming to you uh, once again with the weekly live prophetic word. And, um,. All right, with the weekly live prophetic word. What's my tagline? What do I say every week? Here it is. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. <laughs> One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you just listened to the prophets. That's why you need the prophetic word in your life. So as you come on, please like and share. Please like and share this video so that uh, other people can hear uh, what the Lord has given me to say today, so I can be sure to get it to as many people in the body of Christ as possible, because we want all those that have ears to hear, to hear. So please like and share this video. Now, if you want to support me, um, on my Periscope, there's a paypal.me link, and then on my Facebook, after every video, I put the paypal.me link, and Prophet David Taylor, NFP is a uh, 501c3, so your contributions are tax deductible. And then also Amazon Smile. On Amazon Smile, when you go through the Amazon Smile website, you can choose uh, PDT NFP to donate to. And a, a portion of your purchases on Amazon go to, the, uh, to my not-for-profit. And as you know, uh, I'm uh, doing my project, which is called Meet in My House. Well, I prophesy to people on the street and give them some food and give them a prophetic word. Because God ain't never meant for anybody to be on the street. Okay, if we end up on the street, we took a wrong turn. So I want the Spirit of God to use me to help those people get back on track. So when you donate, that's one of the projects that I do. Okay, and then you can always buy my music, Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. Uh, we're on YouTube, uh, watch the videos, and then uh, on iTunes, you can get the tracks. All right? Now, how and where to find me, I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT. So if you want to look me online, just use hashtag PDT. That's the fastest way to find me. I'm on live every Sunday now, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook and Periscope, and then I simulcast with Twitter on the second Thursday of every month. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I do a teaching called No More Genies, where we talk about getting rid of genie concept, because genie concept has messed people up, where we get rid of the genie concept of God and we get the right concept of God according to the scriptures, okay? All right, <clears throat> so today uh, I have a prophetic word to release, and then we're going to look at the scripture, and today's word is conqueror, so it's a prophetic word that the Spirit of God gave me, so let me release that. For thus saith the Lord, for behold, my people, I have given you a spirit of conquering. You are conquerors. It's time for you to stop saying that there are giants in the land and start slaying the giants that are in the land. Because the devil's not just going to lay down and roll over because you showed up. But if you resist him, he will flee from you. Therefore, I release unto you a new spirit of boldness. And I release unto you a new spirit of authority whereby you may walk in the spirit and power of Elijah and Elisha in the scriptures, where you can pray and speak a word and shut up the heavens from rain, where you can call down fire from heaven to burn up the false prophets, where you can speak to a barren womb, and that barren womb conceives and has life, and where you can multiply oil to get out of debt. And as you begin to walk in this new boldness and authority, you will see my miracle power manifest in your life like never before. So rise up, be bold, conquer, slay, and take your land in my name, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. The Lord gave me that prophetic word, uh, and I'm happy to be able to release it. Now we want to look at the scripture. We want to look at Romans 8. 35 through 37. We want to look at Romans 8, 35 through 37. And I'm reading out of the NIV. Now, Romans is in the New Testament. Okay? Romans is in the New Testament. Okay? Written by Apostle Paul. It's one of the Pauline epistles. And it's full of doctrine, 
for Christianity. Okay, the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 37. Out of the New International Version, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No! In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than, we're not just conquerors, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now, these verses in particular have been done a lot of violence to, and a lot of wrong Christian ideas have come out of them. So, what Paul is saying here is that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Okay? There is absolutely nothing, ooh, sorry, fly. There's absolutely nothing that can separate us from God's love. That means that God will always love you no matter what. That does not mean that everything you say and do is right and that he's pleased with everything you say and do, but his love never changes. Okay? Nothing can come between you and the love of God. Then it says, uh, it starts listing some of the things. Now, when Paul lists these things, these are the things specifically that try to convince us that God doesn't love us. Let's look at the list. You'll see what I mean. Shall trouble. Okay, what is trouble? Everybody knows what trouble is. When things aren't going right, when, when, when the flow isn't good, when bad stuff shows up, trouble. Or hardship. What is hardship? Everybody likes an easy path, but sometimes the path that you're on to try to get where you're going ends up having hardship. Some things are hard, like fire, like flood, like financial reversal, like adultery, somebody cheats on you, like death, like divorce, like racism, like violence, like persecution, okay? Hardship or persecution. Persecution is up next. What is persecution? Persecution is when somebody makes a point to harass you, when somebody makes a point to mock you or scorn you, when somebody makes a point to try to stop you from doing what you're doing, and when somebody makes a point of trying to take your life, that's persecution. Okay, then it says, or famine. What is famine? When there's no food. Okay, fasting, fasting, excuse me, is when you voluntarily give up some meals and when you voluntarily give up on a food denial plan for the purpose of fasting. But famine is when there's no food in the land, where you couldn't go to the store and get some food if you wanted to. Okay? Famine or nakedness. What is nakedness? Nakedness, is, it can be physical nakedness when you don't have any clothes on, but it can also be spiritual nakedness. Uh, if your sins are uncovered and you experience shame, nakedness or danger. What is danger? That means when your safety is threatened. Or sword. What is sword? That means war. That means when there's war. War on the battlefield, but it, all, it also can mean war in the streets. And my pastor was just talking about this morning about the streets of Chicago. It can also mean bullets because there's, there's, there's war in the streets as a sword, the sword of death. Okay? And so then when it says, that is, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long, we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered, that was written when the Hebrews were in captivity. And what Paul was trying to say is that the answer is no. Okay, the next verse, verse 37, no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So in other words, Paul gave you a list. Trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword. Those are the kinds of things that come against you to try to convince you that God doesn't love you. Think about how you feel when you're in trouble. It makes you question God's love. Think about how you feel when things get really hard. It makes you question your faith. It makes you question whether or not God really loves you or not. Think about how you feel when you get persecuted. Sometimes you can get persecuted so hard you wish you never heard of Christ. You wish you never heard of this Christianity thing. You wish you never heard of what was going on because the persecution is so rough. Okay? Uh, what about famine when you don't have any food? You can curse God when you don't have any food. What about nakedness? Okay? When you're naked, 
all you're concerned with is getting some clothes on. What about danger? When you're in danger, danger can produce fear. Okay? And when you, when you produce fear, it's hard to walk in faith when you're afraid. Okay? It's hard to walk in faith when you're afraid. When you're afraid. Okay? What about the sword? When your life's in danger. Okay? These are all the things that come at us in this world to try to convince us that God doesn't love us. And then Paul says, are we victims? Are we victims? For your sake, we face death all, the, death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Are we just victims? Are we just sheep for the devil to slaughter at, at his will? Are we just sheep for a life to take out whenever life gets ready? And then Paul answers that question in verse 37. He says, no. And that's why so many people have gotten confused and thought that being a Christian is synonymous with being a victim. That's not true. Paul is saying that these are the things that are going to come against your life to try and convince you that God doesn't love you and to try to convince you that you're a victim. Okay? But they're not true. Uh, you, they're not true. You're not a victim. Okay? Then Paul says, no, in all these things, stop. Paul said in all these things, okay, in all what things? In trouble, in hardship, in persecution, in famine, in nakedness, in danger, and in sword, you in all those things, you're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. So what does that mean? What's the problem? The problem is always the same. The problem is you've developed a victim mentality. The problem is you are too used to being defeated. The problem is you got too much defeat in your mind and you got too much defeat in your plate. And that's what you keep looking at. That's what you keep thinking. That's what you keep saying. But Paul said it's not true. Paul said we're not victims. Okay? We're conquerors. We're more than conquerors. So let me read that list again. And I'm going to read it in the light of verse 37. Trouble, I can more than conquer it. Hardship, I can more than conquer it. Persecution, I can more than conquer it. Famine, I can more than conquer it. Nakedness, I can more than conquer it. Danger, I can more than conquer it. The sword, I can more than conquer it. But how? Uh, I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. Look at that. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. So Paul starts the thought out with who shall separate us from the love, verse 35. And then in verse 37, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Look at it. He bookends it with love. Look at that. So Paul is saying that the love of God does not change and nothing can separate you from it. Even the list that he gives, trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, none of that will ever make God stop loving you and none of that will ever separate you from God's love. And in fact, Paul says, you are not a victim. You are not just a sheep to be slaughtered. Okay? You know how we know that's not true in a practical sense? I'm going to give you a practical example of how we know what Paul is saying is true, that we're not actually victims. You want to know how that's true? Here's how. Why didn't the devil just kill you last night in your sleep? If we're just victims, if Satan could just walk up to us and do whatever he wants, if life can just walk up to us and do whatever it wants, then why didn't the devil kill you last night in your sleep? I'll tell you why. Because he can't. Because the angels of God are around you. They encamp round about you. And they, and they deliver you if you fear God. Even when you're sleeping, the protection of God is on your life if you love him and if you fear him. Again, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay? And so this also explains to you, as you hear me say many times, why there are so many Christians that end up defeated because they don't love the Lord, okay? They're trying to go through life through their own strength. 
They're trying to go through life through their own, with their own plan. They're trying to make it through life through their own effort. Okay? That's why they end up getting conquered. Okay? But he says we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. All right? So I want you to understand today that we do not have a victim mentality, that we are not victims, we are victors. And as the Holy Ghost said in the prophetic word I gave at the top of this broadcast, okay, it's time for you to stop saying that there are giants in the land and time for you to start slaying the giants that are in the land, okay? Because we are well able through him to overcome, all right? So that's what I want to leave you with this week. I want you to realize that you are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. If there are any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. No prayer requests? All right, then we're going to uh, pray a quick uh, closing prayer. And remember, I'll be here next Sunday at 2.30, and I'm here on the second Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. for No More Genies. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you for your prophetic word. Thank you, God, that we are not victims, but that we are more than conquerors through you. And that through everything that Paul listed, through persecution, famine, danger, sword, uh, death, uh, everything, oh God, tribulation, trouble, we are more than conquerors through you. So we thank you for that, oh God. We believe you for it. And we're going to move forward, Lord. We're going to stop just saying that there are giants and confessing that they're there. And we're going to start slaying these giants through you. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for those of you that are tuning in live. For those of you that are listening to me the new way on SoundCloud, on the podcast, welcome. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, you can find all my social media links anywhere you're hearing or seeing this broadcast, you can find me. And if you want to find me, always look up hashtag PDT. That's the fastest way to find me online. All right? God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. I'll see you same time next week. And we'll be here at 7 o'clock p.m. on the second Thursday of September for No More Genie. So remember, go forth this week and slay your giants. God bless. <laughs>